Hello, my name is Paul Parada, CISO One Point. I'm the general manager of the Key Resort and Spa, Patong. I was born here in Thailand um, at the northern part of Thailand, uh, Chiang Rai. And then when I was nine years old, I went to study in America, in Boston. I spent about 21 years in Boston and then I came back to Thailand about five years ago. My very, very first job in Thailand was in Samui. Uh, and I took the role of uh, F&B manager. And from then on, I grew up uh, in the hotel industry. And then I went on to Got Chang for two years. And then I came here to Phuket for two years. To tell you the truth, I never thought about hotel before. My experience in America is usually mostly restaurant. I work in restaurant all my life since I was 13, cutting vegetable in the kitchen. But when I came back to Thailand, I didn't know where else to start. Uh, five years ago, my friend told me that with my English skills and my my restaurant skills, I can make it in uh, hotel industry. And they recommend Samui because Samui has a lot of foreigner so that I can talk to many, many guests, I can welcome them, and I can use my skill in restaurant management uh, to work in food and beverage uh, department. The most satisfying thing about my job is to see my customer happy. Every day when I see them lounging in a pool chair, uh, they're laughing at the pool bar, they're having drinks at the Sky Lounge, they're getting a massage here at the Key Spa, and they're eating a wonderful meal at our restaurant, you know? And there's that satisfying look on their face, they're happy, and it makes you feel like you're doing something right. It makes you feel like you're a part of their memory in Thailand, in Patong, and you're a part of their very fun and memorable experience and a wonderful holiday, and that's a great thing for me. The most challenging issue right now would have to be the unstable economic and unstable uh, tourism trend. You know, with the last year, we were doing very, very good, and then suddenly something happened in Thailand, and then tourism stopped. Or if uh, there's a bombing, or if there's terrorists, you know, you can't predict what's coming. So. I think the most challenging is to be prepared for the unknown. But I think now we're, we're getting used to how to deal with problems and we're used to how to manage our way out of problems. So we have a backup strategy, we have plan B, plan, plan C, so that uh, whenever unexpected things coming up, we know what, how to handle. And that's the most challenging thing is. And the other thing is that uh, with all hotels and with all, I think with all jobs, you know, the most challenging thing is the people. How to keep our people happy, how to keep our people very, very v well skilled and developed so that they can provide the best service to our customer. And we undergo uh, many, many trainings all the time just to ensure that our level of standards of service is always there. One of my strengths is that I can see the good in people. You know, I know that when I look into my staff, I know what they're good at. I know how to draw it out of them. I know that if I develop them in this way, it will bring the best out of them. And one of my role here as a general manager, I have to know where to put people. You know, you have to put the right man on the right job 
it's it's never get old because when you put the right person in that right position they're very happy at what they're going to do and their work is much much better than you put somebody where they don't feel comfortable or they don't feel like they're doing a good job and they're always sad about their work and you know they don't they're not productive and they don't uh, work well so one of my strengths that I see I go around and then I assess if this person is does match this job or if this person is better off with the other position and I work with my head department to see how we can develop our staff, how we can develop their skills, how we can get them to perform better. And I make sure that each year my staff are better trained, they're more developed, and they have more skills. That I know I'm very sure of. And the other uh, strength that I have is that I listen well. I take everything into account. I don't make rush decision. I know that I have to get to the root cause of the problem to fix the problem. I listen to my staff. I listen to my cleaner. I know that they're out there facing the problem every day. They know better than I do. They know better than my head departments do. And by getting that information, by listening, you can make your operation better. You can provide better service and you can get right to the root cause and then fix the problem for good. I would say that I'm a firm believer in karma. I think that if you do good things, good things come back to you. If you do bad things, bad things always come back to you. And it's my personal philosophy because it makes you want to only do good things, you know. When you do good thing, it doesn't mean that you have to be a monk or you have to be a nun. By doing good things, you can do little things in life. You can make uh, people happy every day. You can smile. You can be honest about your job. You can give it your all every day at your work. And you can make your life, the lives of my, my staff happy, you know, that's, that's doing good things. And I think karma works in a mysterious way. And I think that if you provide yourself and if you do yourself, live every day with good deeds, good deeds will always come back. I think the most successful work project that we have is uh, meeting the budget. Uh, last year we had a very very tough budget in both revenue and in both uh, profit that we have to make and my team, everybody, uh, my team and I achieved the budget and we over, uh, we over projected in the profit area and the reason why we could do that is that you know the whole team worked together, the whole team had the same target and once we have the same target and once we have the same goal, we could move forward together and everybody uh, pitched in, everybody had a hand. Um, the revenue center, my room division, my F&B, they tried very, very hard to drive sales and to drive revenue. And my cost division, my housekeeping, and then my chef, engineering team, they know where to save costs. We don't cut costs around here. I think if we cut costs, we're going to lose on quality, but we control the cost and we control it by the budget and we control it by the plan that we have in our financial year. And the whole project came together. We did cost saving. We have revenue uh, driven uh, projects and with both of those hand in hand, we work together and we meet the budget and everybody is very happy. What put a smile on my face? Uh, I think my, my guests put a very, very big smile on my face. If I know that guests are happy uh, after they use the service, after they come out from the spa, after they have dinner, or even after ha they have their room clean, I'm very, very happy. When I see a smile on their face, they tell me that they're happy with the service, they enjoy their meal, and they enjoy the spa, you know, and that, that's, that's a great feeling. And it's very, very satisfying. The other thing that puts a smile on my face is that when I see my staff, uh, when they're cleaning the room, very, very happy, they're smiling, or when they see my service staff, 
uh, serving customer food, uh, making food for, uh, for the guests. And I see them smiling. They, I see them interact with each other. I see them working together. And I watch this from afar, you know, because when you in the area, everybody has to smile up for GM. But if you, do, you don't let them know that you're there, you can actually uh, hide and watch them to see how they work. And when they do that without you being there, you know, that's a great, great big smile on me. I want guests to feel like they're coming to their second home, you know. Many, many of our guests are returning guests. Some of them are fifth time, sixth time. Uh, the key opened six years ago and we had guests that are six year returning, many, many of them. Uh, and we do have guests who comes uh, to the key about four times a year and it is and it feels like their second home and I want that feeling throughout for every guest and every time we have returning guests uh, we put a, a little message on their bed we said welcome home which you know we tried uh, we, we make sure that everybody makes them feel like at home also um, not only for our guests but our first our staff too I want our staff to feel like this is their second home because if you think about it they probably spend more time here at work than at home so if they feel like this place is their second home they can provide better service they can provide very very helpful and friendly and then in return my guests will feel like it's their second home also I remember one time one guest was very very unhappy because he felt like our, our hotel was too loud you know with the central location uh, with all the things that's going on in Patong, uh, you, you do tend to get noise uh, during the day from the pool bar and at night from Bangla Road. So he was very, very upset that our hotel wasn't right for him. So I remember that uh, me and the FO manager, we took him to about six rooms just to let him feel, let him see that this room is this sound, this room is this view, this room has this noise, which one would you be, uh, uh, be happy in? So he finally settled on one room and then after, after that, I checked on him every day to make sure he was happy and at the time he, he checked out, he said that he never had better service anywhere most people wouldn't care you know you book this room this is your room type you know deal with it but I feel like that's that's not right I feel like with with us we have to make sure from beginning to end their experience is a memorable one and he recommended many many guests coming back to us just because he knew and he was confident that when he sent guests to our hotel that we would do them right and that we provide the best service that we can. If you're talking about advice, I would say that one thing that you have to love it. You have to have the passion. You have to have the love for hotel industry. My advice would be that review yourself, think about what you want to do and ask yourself is this something you're willing to give your hundred percent for you know because hotel industry is not something where you said let's try it out maybe I like it or, or maybe I don't like it it's not you have to go in you have to be committed and you have to love what you do you know if you are a person who doesn't smile if, a, if you're a person who hates people bothering you or asking you for requests this is not for you if you think that you're good at the numbers and you think and you're good at sales but you're not good at service it's not for you. You have to be very, very well-rounded. You have to very, be very compassionate and you have to be very understanding of people's need, of, my, uh, of your team's need. So all of this together, you have to commit 100% or else you won't make it in the hotel industry.